Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily update for November 16th, 2021. Well, we're seeing the usual games being played, in this case to take your mind off inflation, where you're being hit hard at the gas pump, with utility bills, with food bills, with virtually everything. The Warhawks are now pushing for a confrontation with Russia. This is a classic case of uh, diverting the subject, uh, an attempt to cover their responsibility for the economic crisis. Now, what have we been told? First, we were told inflation is transitory. That's what the Federal Reserve Chairman said. That's what the Treasury Secretary said. And all the talking heads on business uh, channels all had the same line. It's just going to be here for a short time. Now they're saying it may be sustainable. Secondly, tapering will begin soon. In other words, the Fed will stop buying financial assets and start selling some. Well, they're continuing to pump money to the tune of over $100 billion a month into the system. That's adding to the inflation. Now their line is the corona crisis, the pandemic, is the cause of inflation. Well, the reality, which they won't admit because they don't want you to know, is that inflation is due to the unbelievable amounts of money pumping by the Federal Reserve that is... Uh, at the same time, building up the money supply, lessening the value of the dollar, and accelerating the decline of the physical economy, which is the real source of wealth uh, for a nation. Now, the solution, according to the late economist and statesman Lyndon LaRouche, is that you have to combine banking reorganization, which means Glass-Steagall, which means debt write-down and cancellation, it means a bankruptcy reorganization of the bloated companies, including the financial firms, combining that with the National Credit Institution, a Hamiltonian central bank, a Hamiltonian national bank, which makes credit available for producers. We have to take power away from the powerful banking cartels and the financial institutions connected with them, the, finan the private financiers who run the central banks, and are pushing instead for a great reset to give themselves more power, more control over spending as well as credit policy. But you're not supposed to know this. Uh, that's why there's a, an attempt to censor what we're doing, as YouTube would not allow the uh, live streaming of the Schiller Institute conference this last weekend, where this was a major subject of the second panel on Saturday, and you can see that at the SchillerInstitute.com website. Instead, there's a buildup of war propaganda, especially against Russia and China. Classic Orwellian strategy right out of 1984. Let's look at the, the latest psychological warfare propaganda campaign, which has to do with the line that it's Belarus and Russia against the European Union. Now, the London Economist, which is one of the leading journals of the British psychological warfare operation and the British and the city of London, they have an article today saying that Moscow and Minsk are using refugees as payback against the European Union for the sanctions against Belarus, for the attack on the Lukashenko government. And what they say is that uh, Moscow and Minsk quite, quote, hope to generate a humanitarian crisis that will test the EU's resolve and unity. Now, this is really rich in hypocrisy, that Russia and Belarus are creating a humanitarian crisis. Who's responsible for the unending string of humanitarian crises in the world? Let's just tick them off quickly. The false flag of 9-11, which led to the endless wars in the Middle East the Afghan war, which just ended recently, but which they're trying to extend through freezing funds, through not providing any aid to help the government there, uh, and through essentially creating a situation where people will starve and freeze, which will lead to more instability in the region. The Iraq war was another one of these operations. Uh, the Libya war, the war in Yemen, which is fully backed by the United States and NATO, and the war in Syria. And now we have the attack on uh, Belarus, 
But keep in mind that, that Poland itself has been in a conflict with the European Union. And then add to all of these things in terms of the creation of humanitarian crises, the continuation of sanctions against these countries that have been attacked after they've been attacked, after their economies have been pillaged and destroyed, their cities ruined, their infrastructure shattered, sanctions are imposed on them, like the Caesar sanctions on Syria, the sanctions against Iran, against Afghanistan, against Yemen, to starve the populations. That's the cause of the refugee crisis. The humanitarian crises come from the war policy of the transatlantic governments. And add to that the role of the International Monetary Fund in restricting credit to the poorest nations in the world, which means that these nations have millions of people who have nowhere to go to avoid starvation and civil war except to Europe. So this is what's created the humanitarian crisis. And they're still doing it. They're still insisting, for example, the U.S. Treasury in freezing the funds to Afghanistan until the Taliban meet some, meet some conditions, which means people will starve to death there. Now, add to this the recent development with uh, the comments from Sir Nick, uh, General Sir Nick Carter, the U.K. Chief of the Defense Staff. He said in an interview that while he doesn't think Russia wants a hot war, he said, quote, they would apply all the instruments of national power to achieve their objectives, unquote. What are their objectives? To destabilize the European Union? Russia's providing natural gas to the nations of Europe. Russia has done nothing to interfere with these countries. The argument that they've interfered with Brexit election, with the French election, uh, with the U.S. election, is all a fantasy designed to stoke anti-Russian sentiment in the West. Now, Sky News went so far as to quote the discredited Christopher Steele, the former MI6 agent, who has been exposed as an absolute liar, who provided a dossier to carry out regime change against the Trump administration based on lies presented by an asset of the Brookings Institute, uh, Fiona Hill, a longtime anti-Russian operative. And Steele said that he, believed that, that, that he believes that Moscow thinks it is at war with the United Kingdom and its allies. So there you have it from one of the most discredited sources who's being quoted by Sky News to justify British escalation against Russia. The Daily Mirror had an article saying that the United Kingdom is preparing a task force of 600 troops to deploy to Ukraine to deter a Russian invasion. Now, in spite of all the talk of a Russian invasion, there's no evidence of this. Even the Ukrainian Defense Ministry denied that there's a massing of Russian troops on the Ukraine border. But if there were, if Russia did intend to invade Ukraine, do you really think 600 British troops would, would stop the Russian aggression? No, this would be an attempt to bring in the United States, the classic strategy of the British, to bring in the United States to carry out the wars of the imperial legacy of the United Kingdom. So I would urge people to go to the Schiller Institute conference this last weekend at SchillerInstitute.com and listen to the first panel, especially the dialogue that occurred between the deputy ambassador from Russia at the United Nations, Dr. Andrei Kortunov of the Russian International Affairs Council, and Helga Zeplarouche on how there is a pathway for peace between the United States and Russia. That war is not only not an answer, but it's not in the offing. It's, no one benefits from that. So go to that and, and, and watch that and, and see if it changes your thinking. None of what was said is ever reflected in the mainstream media in the United States. Now, yesterday there was a discussion between Biden and Xi Jinping by phone. We don't have much in the way of details yet. I hope I can bring you something of that with tomorrow's update. So thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you again tomorrow.